Okay, hi. Um, one thing preliminary is that uh, y you really do need to go and get yourself an introduction to using APT, the Aperture Photometry Tool, before proceeding uh, with this video. What I hope to show you in this video is uh, just how uh, APT can be used to do differential photometry or what is sometimes called differential false aperture photometry. Uh, kind of like what's going on with people who are doing variable star work for the AAVSO and that type of thing. It's not too complicated, but people do run into issues when they start using APT with images from their own uh, local observatories and whatnot, which, which may or may not have the necessary information permanently embedded within the FITS file header for you. Um, so part of the key here is to understand uh, both uh, source intensity, uh, subtracted sky intensity, trying to get a value of, of the pixel values of the stars in question uh, versus your comparison stars, and then trying to fit a zero point to your photometry in order to get a correct magnitude readout uh, from the APT software. So I have opened here an image um, of a fairly well-known variable star called R. Leo Minoris. And it is located uh, right there in this, uh, in this aperture here. And the apertures have already been set. I'm not gonna talk about full width half maximums and how to set the aperture radii and whatnot. Uh, that, that is also discussed in the prior video that you should watch. So we've got our star uh, here. And uh, what we want to do is figure out what this star's magnitude is relative to uh, a comparison star or two. And to do that, um, one can't just sit, uh, click on a star in the, uh, in the software and then down here on the lower left see where it says aperture photometry results. Um, one can't just hope that the magnitude here, which is 9.1850, is correct because it probably isn't. And the key to that is located under this More Settings button here down at the bottom. And when you look inside the More Settings uh, button, a couple things that are really important is that uh, you really want to have your, your Select Sky algorithm set to Model B, which uh, sets a sky annulus median subtraction from the, the region where the star is actually located inside the, the annulus. Um, you could also use Average uh, as you see fit, depending on the type of work that you're doing. But more importantly, uh, setting this the magnitude zero point is really important. This value of 22.0000 is, is nonsense. Um, I, I just stuck that in there. So how do we find out what the magnitude zero point is? Um, let, let's close this window and then let, let's take a look at our star field and then let's go over here and look at um, the AAVSO chart, the finder chart for RLMI in Leo Minor, and you can see that we've got a number of, of really good uh, comparison stars here to choose from. Uh, I'm gonna point out the 12.7 and the 12.9 here. Let's look at 12.7. Um, that star uh, is, uh, let's see if we can locate it quickly. Get our Leo Minor up in view here. There it is, R Leo M I, and then you've got these two stars up here. The left one and the right one are the 12.7 and the 12.9. So here's the 12.7, here's the 12.9. If I select the 12.7 star and get it get it nicely centered in terms of, of the annulus, get it clicked on, there we go. Um, the software will report a source intensity with sky subtracted of 26247. So that's the pixel count, uh, the, the intensity of uh, the star's light uh, with the background sky's light subtracted from it. Right? And we can use this value since we know what the magnitude of the star is in our filter. By the way, this is a V Johnson Cousins photometric filter that we've used here for V, visual or green as the case may be. Um, and we go back to the AAVSO website and we're like, ah, 12.7, what is its accurate magnitude? And we can go look at the photometry table for that. 
And so for the 12.7 star here, we have a V magnitude of 12.686. And we can use that. So 12.686 is the known magnitude. So 12.686 is the known magnitude. The sky mice background count in our image is uh, down here at uh, 26247. So I'm going to enter that, 26247. And I've created this little spreadsheet in Excel that will automatically calculate the zero point. The zero point is simply the known magnitude of the star plus the instrumental magnitude of the star in your image. So this is going to equal the known magnitude 12.686 plus 2.5 times the log to the base 10 of the sky minus background value or the instrumental magnitude which is 26247 and you end up with 23.7336992 as your zero point so if I copy that and then go back into APT go to the more settings go to the magnitude zero point and paste that value in and say apply settings and close window You'll now see that if we click on the star down here, that you get a magnitude of 12.686. Oh, lo and behold, the correct value. Not bad. Now, if you, uh, if you go down here and you click on our LMI, it will report a magnitude of 9.9201. That's basically how it's done, nice and simple. Uh, if you are uh, looking for more precise values, you could do more of these known magnitudes versus sky mice background values and co collect more zero points across the image and then perhaps average them together and get an average zero point for the entire image. Uh, there are a lot of ways of doing this. There certainly are a lot of ways of doing this, but that is, um, a really quick uh, way of getting a zero point out of an image for yourself. Now, things to be wary of, if you look in this image, you'll see a couple of columns that are bad. You want to avoid uh, standard stars with bad columns or perhaps some hotter pixels than usual because of a cosmic ray strike. Uh, you want to make sure that your stars are not uh, clipped off at the top and, and well, you know, blooming, for example. Uh, if your intensity maximum for your CCD is 655.35, you don't want to be peeking out up anywhere in that nonlinear range for the sensitivity of your chip. Uh, you also don't want to be working in crowded star fields, that type of thing. So there's uh, a really cool thing you can do. And of course, once you've done this, you could also uh, go through and use the source list tool, and it will go and measure all the magnitudes for all the stars in the entire image. And that's kind of cool for things like open clusters and whatnot. Kind of a neat thing. If you go in here, um, we're going to create a new source list. Uh, we'll reset the file name. No, we'll just use the file name it has up here. Uh, we'll go up here and say, yeah, that's really neat. We'll, we'll create the source list. It's going to find all the stars in the image and life is great. We'll close the window and then we're going to say, you know what, let's process the source list and it's going to do photometry and all of them based on our one star here, our one reference star. Now that's kind of risky perhaps, but it gives you a quick idea of the power of APT software. If you are measuring an open cluster and you're not going to want to sit there and click on uh, several thousand stars for the rest of your afternoon and then try to remember which ones you clicked on in what order, uh, this software will click the create the source list for you put them in the correct order, allow you to save off that source list, and then allow you to operate that source list in several different images of, say, B, V, and I uh, filters, which allows you to do some really cool color magnitude diagrams for open clusters, and then you can use like spectroscopic parallax to figure out the distance to the cluster, uh, and then the age of the cluster, and things like that. So, very handy. So once you've got that, you can, you can list your results, you can see all sorts of uh, beautiful stuff happening here in terms of of the data and uh, tell me that's not cool it's all right there for you to play with
Okay, so that's what I have. Uh, how to set the zero point, critical piece uh, to understanding APT. And um, feel free to email me if you have any questions or comments. We'll, uh, we'll work on it together. Thanks.